Hey everybody, welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. I am having technical difficulties today, so I am doing the podcast on a different format, so hopefully it will go just fine. Today we are going to talk about losing weight eating the wrong foods. So have you ever heard of a professor named Mark Hub? And I really don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name right, so I apologize, Mark, if you're out there and possibly listening to this. But anyway, he was a professor at Kansas State University, and back in 2010, he wanted to prove that you can lose weight eating the wrong foods. And if you've been following me for any time, you know that my philosophy is calories in versus calories out. I have done massive research on most of the diets out there, and a lot of them are repeating diets, so like Atkins is now keto and things keep getting replaced. But the bottom line in all diets are lower calories and you will lose weight. So he wanted to prove to his students that you can lose weight eating the wrong foods as long as your calories in are lower than your calories out. Every three hours he ate Twinkies, Oreo cookies, and Doritos, and basically convenience store items that he could buy. And in 10 weeks, he lost 27 pounds. If that gives you hope to eat convenience store foods and lose weight, you probably could do it for sure. So unless you have some sort of medical issue, as long as you eat fewer calories than you're burning, you're going to lose weight. And when I'm talking medical issues, most of the time it's thyroid issues for women over 40, things like that. You menopause yes is a factor or perimenopause or going through menopause is a factor but you still can lose weight anybody that i have heard from or talked to who is in menopause and you know has gained some weight and they say that you know they cut down a little bit i still would question if they actually food logged and actually knew exactly what they were eating and exactly what they were burning um, I still stand by saying calories in versus calories out for sure. So the problem with eating convenience store foods is you're probably going to feel like crap. You're not going to be eating a lot of good quality foods that really fuel your body. You know, if you had a Ferrari, you can't run it on optimal. Um, you can only run it on optimal gas. You can't put bad gasoline in there. And you got to think of your body like that. Your body needs to run on solid, good, healthy fuel. I am not saying you can't have Dorito or Oreos or whatever every now and then, but overall, about 80% of your food really should be high quality foods. And again, there are no right and wrong foods per se. So you're going to find that surprising coming from me probably, but I feel that you can pretty much eat anything you want and still have a healthy fit body. There are factors that are involved and there are certain things you need to do. So you can't just eat Twinkies and Ho-Hos all day long and sit on the couch and expect to have a healthy fit body. That's unfortunately, (laughs) I didn't make the rules. That is just not how it works. So there is a difference between quality of foods, but you can lose weight eating quote unquote wrong foods, crappy foods, or processed foods from time to time. And when I say from time to time, yes, it could be once a year. Like if you've heard me talk about cinnamon buns, technically, most of the time, I usually have them like once a year. It doesn't have to be that spread out. Even like once a day, you could have some sort of processed food as long as you're fitting it in around some healthy other foods. So The problem comes in when you stop paying attention to your hunger and satiety signals. And if your hormones are out of whack, these signals may not be firing correctly at all. And today's processed food also keeps the hormones from allowing our body what it does naturally. So if you are overweight and you're kind of out of touch with your hunger and satiety feelings, like when when your stomach is growling or when you feel comfortably full, if you're out of touch with that, there are some things that you can do to kind of tweak and kind of get yourself back on track. It really depends on the person. So a diet is definitely not the answer. You are going to drive yourself crazy trying to follow today's hyped up diets and figuring out what you should or shouldn't eat. For the woman who wants to lose some inches, lose body fat, and feel good in her own skin, you can enjoy so-called wrong foods here and there. 
So here's the solution to losing weight while eating the wrong foods. First off, overall, you want to mostly choose foods that have one ingredient. For example, chicken, apples, broccoli, fish, eggs, avocados, nuts, anything like that. Aim for five or few, fewer ingredients in the foods that you're selecting. Take a look at your nutritional labels. If it doesn't actually have a label, that's a good thing, meaning it's a banana, it's an orange, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, salad, stay in the outside of your perimeter um, in that produce section, right? Or the farmer's markets. So making the wrong foods fit, and quote for wrong. So in the past, I have gone through the process of doing a fitness contest. I have not succeeded in my goal yet. <laughs> so know that I am human and uh, I am still, it's in the background right now, but I do want to do a fitness competition in the future. I just have other goals that are more precedent for me right now. So, but while I was on the fitness journey of um, training for a fitness competition, I ate ice cream every night. I, no exaggeration, it was not a gallon of it, but it was, I, I honestly, I don't remember the exact amount, but I was eating ice cream every night and I was losing weight. I did have to stop eating real ice cream because I found out I was lactose intolerant. So if you're, if you understand lactose intolerance, you know, milk does not go well with lactose intolerant people. So there went the ice cream. But I did find an alternative that I absolutely love. And I still give myself quote unquote treats. So you can absolutely fit in those wrong foods like processed foods and you can still keep progressing onto your goals as long as you're eating less than you are burning. The key is to making wrong foods work for you. So again, the key is to watch your portion sizes. So let's say you're eating 20 Oreo cookies a night. Instead of going completely cold turkey and setting yourself up for a possible binge, because if you're anything like me, that's what happens. Instead of doing that, eat 15 for a week or two. So meaning instead of eating 20 a night, eat 15 a night and then do that for a week or two. And then once you're comfortable, drop down to maybe 10 a day. Keep going until you might only have one cookie a day where you feel satisfied. If you like burgers or cheesesteaks, Instead of having a regular side size burger or cheesesteak, make it a slider. Make it smaller portioned. Eat plenty of vegetables and lean meats, um, which will look like a larger portion size than a cheesesteak or a burger. So absolutely, there are better quality of foods out there, but you still can lose weight eating the wrong food. Just maybe not as often or maybe in smaller portion sizes. You know, our portion sizes nowadays are so out of control. Like, we don't even know what an actual regular size portion is. Um, if you go to any of, like, the five-star restaurants, honestly, a lot of times what you get, that is a portion size that you should be eating. Um, another good rule of thumb is, like, if you're looking at protein, it's the size of your palm without your fingers. Carbs, starchy carbs is about a fistful. And then your fibrous vegetables, two fistful. That's a really simple, simple, easy way to look at a plate. Um, one of the things I want to mention too is I am running a Crush Your Cravings Challenge. I just ran the first one last week and I think it went really well. Um, actually today I'm going to find out how everybody did and really get information from it. But I want to invite you to come check it out. You can go to shapeitupfitness.com slash stop cravings with an S at the end and get on the list for the next one, which is July 6th. So if you are listening to this at a later date, you can absolutely go to that link and see if it is still active. I plan on running these for quite some time. So definitely jump in again. It's shapeitupfitness.com slash stop cravings. I'm going to give you five steps on how to crush your cravings. And honestly, when I figured this out, it was so much easier to lose weight very efficiently, quickly, and without the mind drama. So check it out. Shapeitupfitness.com slash stop cravings. All right. So getting back to eating the wrong foods. Um, 
If you're trying to resist eating the wrong foods, you can easily set yourself up to feel guilty and beat yourself up. And doing this mental cycle is not a good place to be in. Again, this is why I am offering the Crush Your Cravings. Um, It's going to help put you in a better mental capacity. And I know this for a fact because I have been there. When I was a ballet dancer, it was really ingrained to us that you literally don't eat. And then when we would have a show, and after the show, we would go out and we would go overboard. You know, two appetizers, main meal, dessert, drinks, whatever. And then we go back on the path of where we didn't eat so much. Very similar to your typical quote-unquote diet where you basically starve yourself and then you overeat or binge and then you quote-unquote get back on the wagon the next day. And that is really not healthy for you. You want to find, especially if it's mentally messing with your brain and how you look at food. And I did the work. I know that it can be done and crushing your cravings is part of it, but um, it's very unsettling when you're in this constant starve and binge mode and you feel really out of control and that there's something wrong with you. That's what I used to think, that there was something wrong with me, and I really don't recommend this path. So here's what I do recommend to lose weight eating the wrong foods. Everything in moderation. Donuts and cinnamon buns are my <laughs> kryptonite, and... You know what yours are, and it's okay to eat them. Really, just remember, it's better to eat one donut a day than six donuts in one shot. That alone is just like, (laughs) you'll have to go into Crush Your Cravings, and I tell a story about um, my donut addiction, I guess you could say. So definitely sign up for that, Um, and you can hear about my past with my donuts. But Um, just even eating that much sugar in one day, it just upsets your blood sugar levels. Um, it throws off the hormones. It's, it's just not a good way to go. It's better to have like one per day to kind of, you're going to get a little bump in your blood sugar, but not as drastic as like overeating. Um, so with that said, you know, be aware of certain foods such as flour and sugar. They generate a chemical response in our body. They are in pretty much everything. Um, You know, we have sugar in our toothpaste, for crying out loud. (laughs) There's sugar in our spaghetti sauce. There's there's sugar in a lot of things. Even like um, if you look at some of the artificial sweeteners, uh, I know Stevia, for instance, a uh, client and I, she client presented it to me and she was like, can I, can I eat this? You know? And I said, let's look at the nutritional information. And here in the Stevia, I don't know which brand it was, but in the stevia, half of it was regular sugar and half was stevia. And I'm like, you might as well just have table sugar at that point. So um, I'm going off on a tangent on stevia. So <laughs> it's all right. Uh, so if you are struggling with your weight loss goals, you might want to try to ditch the flour and sugar for a month and see how you feel. And slowly add it back in and see what happens. It's like hitting the reset button. Um, same thing about gluten-free products. You know, you just you got to read your labels. Some of the gluten-free products are going to still raise your blood sugar and knock off those hormones a little bit. So just keep in mind, again, read your labels. Fruit is another one that also has sugar. Um, I would not eliminate fruit completely because you're getting good minerals and vitamins. But again, you want to kind of keep that in Uh, moderation. Think about when we were cave people and we were hunting and gathering. Berries were not easy to find and we had to pick them. Um, You know, we couldn't always have six bananas in one shot (laughs) a lot of times unless you were living on a tropical island. So again, be aware of the sugar that is going to affect your hormones. Um, Artificial sweeteners is another thing to look out for. And the interesting thing is your taste buds are going to change once you kind of tweak some of your foods. And I'm not saying you have to give up all your favorite foods. Um, I know when I was younger, my father owned a convenience store and we had pretty much anything at our disposal. Disposal. We had subs, we had cheesesteaks, we had ice cream, we had candy. Um, we used to sell video rentals. We had any kind of like drink, um, you know, sodas and Gatorades and milk and everything. And one of the things we used to have was Eneman's Donuts. 
And I used to love the Edmonds Popums. And years later, I hadn't had them for a long time. And I want to say this was like in the late 90s after I'd gone through college. And uh, I ate one and it was the most disgusting thing that I have ever eaten. It felt like fur and chemicals on my tongue. So the good thing is, is when you start tweaking some of these things and, and tweaking them, like say you like pizza. I know one of the things that I've tweaked from just being lactose intolerant is I will get the cauliflower crust pizza and I'll just put spaghetti sauce on it. Sometimes I'll put, put the fake um, mozzarella cheese on it, but a lot of times I like it just plain and then I put some vegetables on it, whether it be um, spinach and mushrooms. Sometimes I'll put Canadian bacon on there. Sometimes I'll put, you know, chicken or sausage or something. You can start to tweak it and you'll be amazed how much your taste buds will change. Um, a lot of clients who come to me, you know, when they cut out, a lot of things they cut out first is soda. And when they haven't had soda for like a year, they have it and they come to me and they're like, oh, I had soda and it was horrible. I'm like, yeah, y your taste buds changed. So I have definitely been where you have been. I call myself a recover, recovering carboholic for sure. Back when I was dancing, I did not know anything about nutrition. I would eat tons and tons and tons of bread. I don't even think I knew what protein was back then. Um, but it is possible to take the steps forward and to kind of change your palate and know that you can eat some of the quote unquote wrong foods and still lose weight. So I hope this was helpful. I want to invite you to crush your cravings for sure. Well, I hope this podcast came through and I hope that this, um, today's podcast was helpful to you and knowing that you can move forward, you can lose weight and you can still eat some of the wrong foods. So I want to invite you again to crush your cravings. It's at shapeitupfitness.com slash stop cravings. It's absolutely free. Get in there, get started, learn how to crush your cravings because I guarantee you that is just the starting point. And once you conquer this, crush your cravings, you are going to be amazed at how easy and different and less drama there is about food and about weight loss. So have a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon. Take care.